Hello and welcome to Mr Ridley's GCS Engineering and this is uh, engineering revision number seven and this is all about electronics. Circuit diagrams. The exam will often have one question that features circuit diagrams. You need to be able to understand these and answer questions on them. So here's a circuit diagram and you need to understand some of these symbols and we'll look at these in a minute and you also need to understand the layout of a circuit diagram and remember that circuit diagrams are just a standardized way of drawing circuits. Here you can see a circuit diagram and here you can see a pictorial view so you need to be able to sort of look at a, a circuit diagram and understand what it represents. Printed circuit boards. Um, printed circuit boards are important. This PSP has been disassembled and you can see here the green printed circuit boards and you need to know what printed circuit boards are and also the process in which they're manufactured. So the, the printed circuit board obviously stands for PCB stands for printed circuit board. The board starts off as a sandwich of um, copper and a thermosetting plastic. Some are double sided, some are single sided and then it's manufactured um, in a photo etching process which we'll look at later. And Most electronic components have PCBs in them. Electronic components Electronic circuit components are drawn as symbols so they're easy to recognize all around the world. For this, the exam you should be able to recognize these components and their symbols. So these, I've looked at the exam and these are the ones that come up. Uh, come up. If you know these you'll probably get most of these. So we've got like motor, LED, diode, um, resistor. So these are the components that you need to revise and learn. <coughs> We'll look at some components now. Um, switches. Switches are important but basic components. They switch on and off, the current flow. Switches are available in a, a variety of forms and here are the four, four of the common, most commonly used. So we've got key switch, slide switch, toggle switch, push to make. Push to make is a slightly different symbol there for push to make switch. So there's the symbol and there's switches. Batteries. Batteries are of, often used to provide power for your circuit. You should know about batteries and also quite often the environmental issues regarding their disposal um, and there's some just battery AA, PV3 and of course PV3 battery snap. Transistors. Transistor is basically an electronic switch. A small input um, on the middle leg here will uh, trigger a much larger output. So we've got the base collector and emitter and basically how transistors work is when a small current is applied at the base um, the electron structure of the semiconductor changes and allows current to flow through. I don't think they'll really ask you for this much detail in the exam it's just to really understand how they work. Okay so there's your uh, current flow across the transistor. Capacitors. They, these uh, capacitors store a small amount of electrical charge. There are two main types that you should know about. There's polarized capacitor and non-polarized. And just the difference here is that just the little plus uh, sign here. Um, that's the two types of capacitor. Um, the polarized components. Just while we're looking at this, polarized components are components that have a positive and a negative, or um, so for example on an LED you've got a short leg which shows the negative and a long leg which shows the positive and on a uh, capacitor here you have a, a, a white stripe with a negative thing and also a long and a short leg <coughs> and obviously these need to be connected the right way around otherwise they won't work. Resistors. Resistors are used in a circuit to control the flow of electricity around the circuit or to limit the flow to delicate components and there's resistors and there's a resistor symbol. Variable resistors. Variable resistors are adjustable over a range of values. A typical application would be a volume control. So there's an application for a um, variable resistor, there's a variable resistor, there's a symbol. Thermistors. Thermistors are heat sensitive resistors. They are very high resistance at low temperature but when they warm up their resistance decreases. Current can then flow through them. This makes them ideal as one of the um, components for a temperature sensor. So thermistors are used in all kinds of heating circuit, sensing circuits. Light dependent resistor, LDR. Light dependent resistors are, um, LDRs are light dependent resistors. They have a track of material that's resistance falls as the illumination increases. That's LDR. Buzzers. 
quite simply, buzzers are an output device that make a noise. They're an electromechanical device, which means when a current is applied, they buzz or vibrate. And the buzzers are a po a, have polarity. Electric motors. Electric motors turn electrical energy into movement. Electric motors are driven by electromagnets, and as the current flows through them, the um, armature itself re revolves. You don't need to really know that. What you need to know is that's electric motor, and that's the symbol for an electric motor. Speakers. Speakers work by moving a diaphragm with electromagnets. This in turn moves air and creates sound. So there's a speaker. Integrated circuits. The integrated circuit is a miniaturized complete circuit mounted on a silicon chip. This diagram shows the pin layout of a 555 um, integrated circuit. This is one of the most common ICs, but there's, there's an integrated circuit often appear in circuit diagrams. Light emitting diodes or LEDs. LEDs are not bulbs, they're a component that turn electricity directly into light. The main advantage over light bulbs are, is they are much more efficient in turning a higher proportion of the energy into light rather than heat. So that's the LED. Diodes. The diode is a component that allows current to only flow th one through in one direction. So the a diode is basically an electronic one-way valve and there's a symbol for diode. Insulators and conductors and resistors. So as well as insulators and conductors and electronics, we rely on resistance. A resistor allows some current to flow through but resists the full flow of electricity. We can measure resistance with this um, piece of equipment here, which is a multimeter. Um, the multimeter can be used um, to measure continuity, that is to check that a connection exists between two points, voltage and amps. Um, the different functions are normally selected by rotating a dial here until the pointer lines up with the indicated function. Um, using the, a multimeter. So here, if you look closely, there's a close-up of a multimeter and you can see the dial. There's different um, things on the dial and this has been set to re read voltage and from 1 naught to 20 volts. So this is kind of what you would use in the classroom, this setting here. So that's using a multimeter. Soldering tools. You should be familiar with all of these tools and know how to use them safely. So we've got long nose pliers, side cutters, solder, soldering iron, soldering iron stand, wire strippers, etc. So all these tools you should know the names of. Soldering. Um, your soldering should be neat and tidy with no dry joints. You should always clean the board before each soldering session. When you're soldering, there's a good example of soldering here and you can see that there are no bridges. Bridges are when the solder um, two um, tracks here get, get joined when they shouldn't be and that is called a solder bridge, so that's soldering. <laughs> soldering technique. Um, components are assembled onto printed circuit boards. The, co the component is placed through, so here's a printed circuit board and here's the copper track and here's the leg of the component. Um, <coughs> place the component in position and so the component is placed in position and the soldering iron should touch the track here. So the soldering iron touches the track, heats the track, um, not the leg of the component. That's not how you should solder. Then the solder is added to or touched onto the track here and that's touched onto the copper track. That melts into a nice smooth um, shaped solder joint and then the soldering is finished. The finished joint should be neat and have a smooth, shiny finish. Using CAD to manufacture PCBs. Printed circuit boards are often manufactured using computer-aided design, or CAD. The circuits can be drawn using specialist electronic so software, like this real PCB. There are other software available. These drawings can also be uh, transferred to a CNC milling machine for computer-aided manufacture. So here's a picture of a printed circuit board being manufactured by milling away the copper on the top and leaving the tracks. So that is CAD and CAM to manufacture a printed circuit board. As an alternative to CNC milling, PCBs can be manufactured by photo etching. The PCB board used has a light sensitive coating and is protected by a black plastic covering obviously to keep the light out. Um, the PCB mask is created using the same PCB software. This is printed out onto an acetate sheet. The use of an acetate sheet is used as a mask so it's stuck to the reactive side of the photo etch and it is put into this piece of equipment here which is a light box. 
So the light box then, the light box here, the um, there's your PCB material. The PCB mask is placed over the photo etch and the board is exposed to the UV light for a few minutes. So it's put into the, the light box, exposed to the UV light. Um, the PCB is then brought out and quite quickly put into a shallow bath of um, developing solution. This fixes the developing process and stops further developing. So there we can see that it's come out of the light box, the mask has been taken off and it's been put into the, the developer. Lastly, the circuit goes into an etching tank and ferric chloride, which is basically an acid, removes all the copper not on the board and not protected by the etch resist on the circuit board. So it goes into the uh, etch resist tank here and then you should have your finished circuit board. There are a lot of safety precautions to be taken when e using the etching tank. Um, obviously the, the, the material here, as you can see, the PCB etchant, ferric chloride, is an irritant. It's also dangerous to the environment, so it needs to be disposed of very carefully. Uh, goggles and gloves should be worn. Um, a spent solution should be neutralised and disposed properly. Any solution that's spilt onto the skin needs to be washed with water. So they're all the, the etching tank safety precautions. Making a PCB. Um, these uh, flow diagrams are quite important in electronics. And here is here's the process that I've just described. But here I've put it into the form of a flow diagram. Um, flow diagrams often come up in the exam and you should understand how to write one. And they often ask you to describe a process using a flow diagram. So there is uh, making a PCB in, in the form of a flow diagram. Electronics and the environment. All electronic products will have an impact on the environment because they use up resources. Um, obviously oil for plastics. They use energy to manufacture and they have to be disposed of when they are no longer wanted. So electronic products are have quite an impact on the on the environment. When electronic products are recycled, they're quite difficult to recycle because you have to you've got a lot of different components and parts and materials and they need to be carefully taken apart and the all the materials, different materials separated, but the materials that can come from them are obviously copper. This is a non-ferrous metal and it's a high scrap value, so that's important. Solver, solder can be salvaged if you've got a lot of printed circuit boards, and obviously the plastics can be, can be salvaged. There are other metals and components, but they are the main parts that can be salvaged from electronic components. Rechargeable batteries. Many personal electronic devices now are powered by rechargeable batteries. These generally use lithium ion battery technology. Batteries like this can be recharged quickly, are small and lightweight. The average rechargeable battery can re be recharged about a thousand times before it needs to be replaced. Rechargeable batteries contain harmful metals, so they should never be thrown away with daily rubbish. And they, sh they should always be returned to the manufacturer for disposal or properly recycled elsewhere. Um, the Waste Electrical and Electronic Equipment Directive, the WE Directive, and there's a symbol for it there, um, means that batteries such as this lithium-ion battery, by law, they're, they're, it's regulated and by law, they need to be, they shouldn't be put into landfill. Now, it's time for questions. Name three stages in the photo etching process. So three of the stages in the process of photo etching. They are light box, two developer and number three etch tank. Which component changes resistance with temperature? It is thermistor and there's the symbol and there's a thermistor. What is the correct name of the regulations disp uh, concerning disposal of used electrical products? And there's the symbol there which uh, for these regulations. And it is Waste Electrical and Electronic Equipment Directive. This component is a light-dependent resistor. It works by 
varying its resistance by light applied to the top of it. This component is a electric motor. It works by turning electrical energy into movement. This component is a diode. It works by allowing electricity to flow only one way. This component is a light emitting diode. It works by turning electrical input into light output. Well thank you for watching Mr Ridley's GCSE Engineering and good luck in your exam.